How you doing? Big Just, saying Clips Clothing Company, representing, saying New Orleans Clothing Line, Urban Apparel, on the rise, where uh, we're basically, we represent the aesthetic of hip hop. All four elements, MCs, DJing, graffiti, b-boying, and uh, we put it on the clothes. I grew up here, I grew up in New York. I'm from, I'm from Dykeman. You know, so just this, this, this was my atmosphere. You know, when I, I want to say probably around 91, 92, you know, when Cypress Hill was coming out, stuff like that. Um, that was probably my jams, and um, it was just, it was just everybody that I was around. That's what we were listening to. You know, that's what they were listening to. You know, I'm coming from listening to Prince and Michael Jackson, but you know, it wasn't, it wasn't popping like that for everybody else. So I, you know, I got to follow. Uh, trying to be cool. I'm trying to, you know, get the girls to like me. And then, as time went on, I got more and more into hip hop. Like, you know, as far as, um, you know, as far as uh, more people with lyrics where, you know, you, you, know, you want to speak of somebody like uh, OC, AZ, Nas, you know, Ready to Die dropped, um, you know, Wu-Tang, like we're saying, uh, the Wu-Tang, Enter the 36 Chambers. And then, you know, I'd listen to West Coast too. You know, I'd, you know, I'd listen to Eazy-E, uh, Dr. Dre's The Chronic, you know, uh, uh, those albums like that. We take it down south. I remember because I moved down south in 94. So I started listening to Swap House, you know, A Ball, MJG, uh, rap a lot, you know. So you figure Scarface, Devin the Dude, you know what I'm saying? Uh, uh, Master P, I got into Master P, like I, you know, just the No Limit, just his hustle, you know what I'm saying? His business acumen, and um, so I basically, you know, messed all those all those together. There was a rap group in my uh, in my high school. This is when I was. This is about '95. I'm down in Tampa, well, down in Brandon, Bloomingdale High School. There was a local rap group. They were called uh, Mad Dimensional Snipers. I never seen rappers before. Like, you know, you see them on TV, but these were actual rap group, independent rap group. And uh, they were passing out flyers. And um, they had one. I wasn't able to go to one of their older shows, but I was able to go to one of their shows where it's like Skate Key, All Ages. And I actually got to see a real live hip hop show. Wasn't nobody known, but, you know, it was a pretty, uh, pretty good experience. I actually, my first studio, I had a talk boy. Remember the talk boys from Home Alone? That was my mic. And then my tape recorder was my, uh, where I put my beats and my instrumentals. And um, when I started rapping, I actually used uh, Black Moon, Don't Front, You Know I Got You Open instrumental. It was on the B side. And um, I, I used that. And I used to, since I have a busted lip, I was, I've had it since I was like five, six years old. I used to call myself Crooked Lip. So the song was called CL Flow. My mother thought it was just a fad, you know, because my mother, you know, she's like, ah, it's just a fad, you know, grow out of it. My father was actually, he's like, well, you know, if that's, you know, if that's what you, if that's what you love, do your thing. You know, my father, he's a comedian. So he's been one for like 30 years. So my dad, he's one, he's one to always support. You know, if, if you have a dream or if you have an aspiration, go for it. They weren't, my, my parents weren't necessarily, they weren't unsupportive. It's not like I had to sneak around and, you know, and hide my albums or nothing like that. If I wanted them to buy me something, because I couldn't buy it because of the parental advisory, they'll get it for me. It wasn't, you know, it wasn't an issue or nothing like that. Well, DJ Clips, um, my man, David Sevilla, rest in peace. Um, you know, Three Kings representative. He was actually, me and him met in, it would, I want to say November of 19, or actually no, earlier than that, September 97. Uh, we were seniors in high school, and um, we actually were working at McDonald's. And um, I remember I was already working there, and I had to train him. I'm talking with him, I see him, and I, I notice his swag. I see the kind of kicks he had on. He had a pair of Clark boots on. And I was like, wait a minute, this is Tampa. Don't nobody wear Clarks down here. So I'm talking, I'm like, yo, where you from? He's like, New York. I said, what part? He said, the Lower East Side. I said, oh, really, where? So he's telling me I'm from Baruch Projects. I said, get the, I said, get the fuck out of here. You know what I'm My family's from Smith. And he's like, yo, you from Smith? I said, I'm not from Smith. My dad's side of the family. So, you know, I, you know, I grew up there just, you know, playing at the rec center or whatever. And from there, we bonded. You know, and he was, you know, he was, uh, he was definitely a city kid. Like, he was more, like, I thought I was hip hop until I met him. Like, he really, um, like I was saying earlier, his brothers, you know, Dion was a dancer for Zulu Nation. Um, his brother Chris was a DJ and also made beats. And um, his brother Steven, may he rest in peace, he was a graffiti artist, you know. Used to go in with the cast. So they, David was 10 years younger. These kids, you know, they were all born in, in 1970. David was born in 1980. They instilled all that in him. So by the time David was like 9, 10 years old, you know, he was a lot more advanced as far as, you know, this hip-hop shit because he lived it. He was an embodiment of it. You know, so I, I you know, I, I, I latched on to him. Like, you know, it was just, it was, and, and we were both from the same area. Um, you know, we're both basically, we were alienated because, you know, we're, we're, we were down south. We, you know, we're New York niggas down south. You know, we wearing Tim's, we wearing, you know, Clark Wallabies. 
you know, the, the polo button-ups before anybody else was. You know, everybody else was wearing, you know, Orlando Magic jerseys and Dickies and Mike Cortez's and shit like that. You know, I'm like, which is their form of hip-hop. But, um, you know, he started, you know, you know, it was just certain things. He knew how to cut hair. And then he told me he was a DJ. And I was like, get out of here. And I never, you know, I knew of other DJs, but I never got to be around one. And I never got to, like, be in front of, you know, the turntables and the mixer. And um, he's like, yeah, I'm a DJ. You know, my, my, my brother taught me, my brother Chris. So he had, um, he had them sent down. So, because, you know, I was like, you ain't like, so he had them sent down like a week later. And he had Technique 1200s, the official joints. You know, I'm talking about these were thousand dollars a turntable. This is '97. So, uh, you know, he he, he started. Uh, he had them, and uh, we didn't have a coffin yet. We scrimped and saved and bought him a coffin. And he had went through a couple of mixes. I think his first one was like a Newmark, one of the, the little blue dogs. That was like his first mixer. And um, I was like, "Yo, let's make mixtapes." You know what I'm saying? That was my thing. I was, you know, I, I really wanted to be because aside from being a hip hop head. I also love the business of it. Like I told you, like, you know, Master P was somebody I looked up to and P. Diddy and Russell Simmons. So I was like, yo, let's do this. Let's make mixtapes. So we started hitting up the vinyl shops. Uh, my man Angel, uh, Benton Records. Uh, it was them, Vinyl Fever. Angel mostly had most of the good wax, like more of the newer wax. So we go there and we would spend. We worked at McDonald's, man. We put together our paycheck. We spend $150. That's me and him's half of each paycheck. And, you know, put all the vinyl together and um, do the mixtapes. And, uh, you know, like I said, he, he was running the tracks through uh, to separate, just to separate them um, through Acid 4.0. And, uh, you know, put, you know, was putting out little local mixtapes. And then there was like teen clubs in the area um, in Brandon. Brandon's like a suburb of Tampa. And, you know, got a couple of DJ gigs, but, you know, they didn't really pan out. And then we were doing house parties, you know, things like that. Th things that a, a DJ crew does. You know, well, not DJ crew. He was the DJ and I was... You know, carrying all, all this stuff. This is before Serato. We had, you know, we were stealing crates from Publix. Publix is a supermarket down there to keep the records in. So from 97 to 2005, uh, me and David, DJ Clips, we put out a couple of mixtapes. We, uh, we established a record label, Three Kings Records. I went and got my business license, tax ID number, did it the correct way. Didn't never make no money, but I was legit as far as that went that, you know, I'm official. I'm just not saying I have a record label and I did it. You know, they can look up and, you know, Florida Records and Three Kings Record is, you know, is established. So we put out a couple of mixtapes. The series was called Built by Clips. So he actually got, David must have got about, I want to say, seven deep. And then um, we were working. We started doing artist mixtapes. That's when, remember, 50 Cent started doing the artist mixtapes. We started doing that. It was me and my partner in Rhyme Negative. Uh, we started, we were working on a mixtape called The Kingsman. And um, this was around 2007. And, uh... Uh, unfortunately, uh, DJ Clips, he passed away. Um, he had respiratory problems. He was 27 years old. And, um, and he was just at the height. Like, you know, he, now, he was, now he had three, four gigs a week at clubs. You know, they, was about, they, were, they were putting him on the holiday mixes. You know how the radio stations do the holiday mixes? They were featuring him on stuff like that. He was getting a lot of good looks. He was part of Future Star DJs when they first started out. He was part of the Tampa DJs Coalition down in Tampa where, you know, Sam Mann and DJ Mingle Mix and DJ Royce where they were, um, you know, they, they were really, you know, bringing him in, accepting, accepting him as one of their own. And, uh, you know, when he passed away, it, it kind of messed, you know, it messed everything up. Um, six months later, I bounced. I didn't really, I wasn't really emceeing. Like, I was still doing it here and there. But I bounced. I came back to New York. I, I didn't want to be down there no more. Too many bad memories. And then uh, recently, but, you know, his memory was always kept, you know, that this logo is actually his actual, that's his actual tag. And there's a meaning to that. If you can see it, it's Clips. And what Clips stands for, well, I initially called him that because he was a barber. So he used to cut me up. But he turned it into cutting lyrics into prolific styles. And then this three-point crown right here, that stood for Three Kings because we were Three Kings Records. And then this arrow stands for Always Moving Forward, the one at the bottom. So there's a lot of meaning to that. So we all got tats. Like Tiana got the tat on her neck. I got it on my arm. Um, the CEO of Clips Clothing Company, my man C, uh, C, you know, he's, he's a behind the scenes dude. He has it right here on his forearm. And C actually was Clips' boy a week before me. So it wasn't just me and Clips. You know, C was always there too. He was always behind the scenes, um, you know, making moves for us, things like that. And um, I want to say September, his birthday was September 8th. So September 8th, 2013, the, uh, basically it would have been six years past, um, they had set up 
a clothing line where, you know, that's when uh, Tiana had come in. She had went about it the right way, went through IRS and got a tax ID number, uh, fictitious name, license, things like that. And they started coming out with this, with this, with, with this gear, you know, and it's, it just started with T-shirts. All she did was take it. I thought it was brilliant. I thought it was brilliant. What it, you know, she, the, 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 she's such a visionary. It amazes me because she basically just took his tag and turned it into a whole bunch of stuff. She has, you know, made it where we have V-neck sweaters with the embroidered clips logo here. She has different, she, she has different logos where she has one where it's like the clips logo, but it's the American flag, but the clips logo is where the stars would be at. And it's like this and, you know, uh, 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 vertically. And, uh, you know, and, and, it, and it, it, it blew up like they uh, there was a, very, a lot of good feedback as a lot of people knew clips. And um, we actually got we actually she actually got a lot of love from the hip hop from the hip hop crowd in Tampa. And then also um, a lot of cosigns from a lot of uh, hip hop legends that have been in the uh, industry for quite some time. Uh, the B minors included uh, dysfunctional family, uh, my man, Napoleon, the legend, you know, I call him Napalm Poe. And, uh, you know, they, you know, they bigged her up and they supported us. It's jump. And it's only been, I want to say, four months that the company's been, you know, in existence. And it's amazing where we got sweaters, T-shirts, varsity jackets, hoodies. It's always a remembrance of my, of my boy because Clips, he was really a, uh, he was an extremely special individual. And um, he was stylish, very stylish. So uh, we, we want to make sure that it's, um. We, we want to make sure that people know that this this is his style. Like, you know, the, the kind of stuff that we're making as far as the sweaters, the cardigans, um, you know, regular tees with the clips embroidery, it's just fly shit. You know what I'm saying? As far as, like, I would like to leave a mark the same way Echo Unlimited has left a mark. And you see what what Echo Unlimited has turned to. But I remember when Echo Unlimited first started with the ECHO and the promotional mixtapes that you would get when you would buy their gear. So uh, I think, you know, I, I, I feel that it's going to stay in that lane where it's, you know, it's always gonna transcend and it's always gonna progress, but it's always gonna be hip hop. It's never gonna change into nothing else. This is actually the visionary of our Clips Clothing Company. It's Tiana. Um, you can follow her on Instagram, sneaker chick, 0099. Um, you can also follow us on Instagram, uh, at Clips Clothing Co. Uh, Facebook, Clips Clothing Company. And uh, we're just gonna be around, Tampa, New York, Los Angeles, Miami, you never know where we're gonna pop up. Might be at SX, you know, might be at South by Southwest, might be at the Magic Convention. We might just be in Times Square, you know, trying to sell people shirts. That's one of the new, that's one of the, our newest uh, products right here. This is the uh, baseball style and spelling it out so people can know what the acronym means. Cut in lyrics into prolific styles. And that's actually uh, what that means. And um, that's a new product. And then you see where we are official. You know, you see that, uh, you see that right there. We are official tissue. This is the Clips Clothing Company Movement All-Stars. Now, the story behind this is that that was our first inner city tour within uh, Three Kings Records, and David was actually the DJ on that, uh, on that tour. It was basically around, uh, basically around Tampa. Um, that was started, the uh, name of the open mic night that my man Soul Purpose uh, started up was called The Movement, and we were called The Movement All-Stars because it was uh, basically Three Kings crew, H, Ness, you know, my man Jay Ruins. So uh, that was, it's, a lot of people like that one, I guess, because, you know, gives you that old nostalgia feeling of the tape. This is the regular Patriotic Clips logo. This is basically, this was the first design. So uh, she made a couple of those like that. And as you can see, it's Clips' tag in uh, red, white, and blue is the American flag. You know, a uh, big July 4th seller. You know, hopefully when uh, July 4th Independence Day comes around, we'll be moving a lot of those around, you know? The Eclipse Clothing Company zip-up hoodie. These do come in assorted colors. Right now, this is the color that we have as a sample. But as you can see, you know, it has the, uh, this is embroidery. This isn't, uh, so not only is it just silk screen, it's also embroidery. So this is, you know, this is one of our new lines. Our uh, winter couture, you know, that you would wear when it's, uh, I guess, weather like this that we're going through now. This is a, the Eclipse bomber jacket. Obviously, you know, this is, fish you know nice 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 swag this is actually something clips will wear this like I, I could see him rocking this you know with a pair of slacks and a pair of clock wallabies on and a nice button up underneath when he's going out of course there's his logo again embroidery you know another nice uh, piece of a uh, warm couture there this is the Eclipse clothing company five button cardigan two-tone varsity style 
you know this one is this is a hot one too this has actually been all it's actually been moving pretty well as you can see the clips logo again and we make sure that's all uh, very prevalent in every uh, piece of item this is a v-neck cardigan i would say because this one is more for like females like a dude's wear suit but this one is like this is my swag right here man you know what i'm saying this is my swag right here i rock this you know with uh you know what the uh clips five panel hat i'm not sure if we have a sample of that oh they sold out the five panel hats i rock that this is the official uh clips varsity jacket see this one right here all right clips where i see the logo on the back you know reminiscent of uh you know varsity letterman this actually reminds me this reminds me of the um the avarexes you know what i'm saying you know I'm like, it's not leather but you know it reminds me of the you know the avarex style is definitely varsity of course you see the uh clips logo it's always going to be in the uh upper left hand corner there another another this is actually the female cardigan this one's hot i like this one you know what i'm saying nice nice fabric you see the uh got little touches of leather right here that's that's of course that's the visionary's touch right there i know i know her swag when i see it that's this this is definitely something that uh she concocted you know her, she has a her eye for detail and her eye for fashion it's amazing it's amazing